hey to everybody and their neighbor. Welcome back to Gear and Gigs. I'm your host, Jet Stone. So glad you could stop by today. Today, I've got my good bud, Reg. He's coming in to help me out with a review or two. How you doing, Reg? I'm doing great. Yourself? I cannot complain. Cannot complain because nobody will listen. So today, we're going to jump right into a, a, a double review, um, more of a demo than a review, I guess. We're not going to try to get uh, our opinions on top of yours. You can decide for yourself, I'm sure, once you listen. But we're going to experiment and have some fun with a couple of pedals. So we've got two compressors today. Uh, Reg, compressors. Reg is, is got the, the ear for the subtlety, so we're going to go to compressors and experiment with them a little bit. Excellent. Yeah, Love these compress compressors. Uh, yeah. Other than chorus pedals, that's, that's probably the... The type of pedal I've had, like it would be number three on the most versions of that I've owned. In oh, a lot. well, there you go. Look at that. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Chorus, sure. probably chorus, um, overdrive, and then compressor. Awesome. Then we've got some experienced ears listening to these compressors. Our signal chain today, we're going to use a Strat because nothing needs compression more than a Strat, basically. That's, I think we can all agree that's one of the guitars that really benefits from a, a compressor compared to a Les Paul or something with some heavy humbuckers. Single coils tend to die off pretty quick. For those of you who aren't familiar with what a compressor does, a compressor is kind of like having a sound man on your volume control and he's really smart and he can be as quick or as slow as you'd like him to be to react to keeping your volume within a certain range so you kind of tell it through different settings on the knobs how loud you want things to be at their very loudest and how soft you want things to be at the very softest irrespective of how hard or soft the player is actually playing and you can do what they call squashing it down to the point that everything that's played is essentially the same volume or you can leave this dynamic range and then you can control that by how you play because as soon as you put a compressor on you feel it under your fingers you feel it under your pick or your hands and you tend to play into the compressor so you know it it's it's the kind of effect that's subtle to hear, but it's not subtle to feel when you're playing it. And it, it can be pretty dramatically, uncontrollably bad sometimes. And sometimes it's just exactly what you need. And with a Strat, what it does, since the initial peak on a Strat note is very quick and then it dies off to a low sustain, is we say, well, we don't want that low sustain to be quite that low. So we're going to squish this down and then raise the whole thing up, is what you essentially are doing. So that all, at least, you're here and the, the loudest you can spike out is here so it's easier for the ears and easier for the speakers and easier to make a mix for everything to blend together so that's what a compressor does bass players use them like crazy drums that's, they all, get that's used what i was going to say is that's a, that's, that's a great description of what a compressor does it's it's very easy to understand the way you just explained it now i finally understand i've had so many of them and now i i was like man i can't get this thing to do right? anything what, what? no i'm kidding uh but specific to bass uh, what I was going to add to that is, like, especially if you, um, like, I'm not a slap bass guy, but like, if, like for slap bass guys, but I do sometimes use my index finger as a hammer, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, using a compressor, which I use all the time, I have one that's always on and a second one that I use for an effect. Oh, okay. um, and the one that's always on has a, you know, it's not really being squashed too much. I'm using essentially a two to one, three to one ratio on my, on, on my, um, on my compression. Let's explain and, that real quick. That would mean for every three dB he puts in at a three to one ratio, one dB would come out. So there's an immediate like grabbing of the volume. Right. And, and you can and go real much, quick, much how, higher than that. Yeah. How fast that volume is grabbed and changed is is the attack speed. Right? The attack so speed. And I have a very speed. slow attack speed on it. So it actually gives me a little bit at of least that. The, and then, at least the beginning of that. Like Because the whole reason you're doing that is you want it to be percussive. What I noticed over the years is uh, how some of them can also be a huge effect on your overall tone. Mm, that's true. Regardless of whether you're compressing hard or not, right? Because Just what it does is take the low frequencies that are quieter and pushes them together with all the frequencies you regularly hear and you get a different sound. You can control your EQ in some mm -hmm. respects. Yeah. Yeah, I have that pedal on all the time because of how warm a tone it imparts. It's a, I use a T-Rex squeezer on bass, and that's the always-on compressor. There are different kinds of compression, of course. There's yeah. optical compression, which uses LEDs and lights and, and receptors for the lights. There are electronic compressors. There are digital compressors that do it digitally. And a lot of it's how fast the sound is grabbed, even at a certain setting, how well it's sustained, what the gain, because since gain is a big part of a compressor, yeah. the sound of the gain inside the unit can have an effect on it. And so there's a lot to it. 
but overall, it's a subtle thing. And so the, please keep yeah. that in mind as we listen. And, and let's get right into it. Uh, we've got an MXR studio compressor. Okay. The new studio compressor pedal, fairly new, I should say. And then we've got our good buddy, Andy Timmons, uh, his signature compressor limiter from Carl Martin. Okay. So we've got both of those to compare. And Andy, in advance, I love you, buddy. And I, I, have, I don't know which one's going to win. I haven't tried either one. So this will be new for me on both of these. Brand new, haven't tried them. We're going to go into the Two Rock Studio Pro 35. We've got a Two Rock speaker. We're micing that up with a vintage tube mic. We're going over here to our trusty liquid channel with the Neve Desk simulation, using our Digico board for A to D, and then going straight to Zoom. No DAWs, no post processing. It's just going straight to you, just like it is us right now. Neither one of us have heard either of these pedals. You've never heard either of these pedals. And I have not read up on these, so I can't give you a ton of specs, but I'm sure you can look that up. Really, this is more about how do they sound, how well are they use, how, you know, how easy is it to use. So let's, uh, let's establish our, our signal. This is a custom shop, uh, 60, I think, 1960 reissue, just relic. Um, we're gonna run that straight in and listen to that dry. I'll go through the pickups real quick, and then we'll get into the first compressor, the MXR Studio compressor. So let's take uh, let's take that spiky bridge pickup sound, and uh, let's see if we can tame it with the compressor. Okay, before I adjust anything, that's already not too bad. Uh, you might have hopefully noticed the difference. For our controls on this, it's your standard input output volumes, your release time, which is when it stops controlling the volume and lets things go back to whatever they were going to be. Uh, the attack time, as we've talked about, and then the ratio, as we've talked about. So Okay, that's ratio, all you need right there. That is that's all you need. All you need. 4, 8, 12, and 20 to 1. 21 is, that's, that's squeezing it, that's baby. Slamming that's, it. that's limiting. That's right really now. slamming it, yeah. That's, which limiting means no matter how much you give it, it's like it's hitting, you've heard the phrase brick wall, perhaps. It means right. it's just not going past that no matter what. So. Yep. All right, well, um, we've got kind of a medium setting on almost everything. I'll just put the knob straight up. So what is that ratio-wise, around 8 four to 1? Uh, 4 to 1. So 4, four to, to 1, okay. So I'll take it back out, play a couple things, kick it back in so we can hear the direct difference. initial impression is very pleasant yeah hardly noticeable but it, it really is it, feel it, it it's like yeah, a sustain it, it it's hardly noticeable and... i was going to say maybe try the same exact thing but kind of hit it hard okay just hit hit a couple hard chords now we do have some pretty serious metering i'll tilt that up so maybe maybe you can see the metering as i do this So that's telling me the amount of gain reduction we're getting, and it's about 6-7 dB right now that we're getting in gain reduction when I really whack it. Now I'm going to do nothing but to just change the compression ratio and then match volume again. Did you go down on the ratio? No, I or went up. up. You up. went up. So now it's eight. Very natural sounding when it's on. Right? Too. It is. Yeah. Let's try 12. It's feeling like it's clamping down a little bit more on it now. It is, but it's still, it's tight sounding. You know what I mean? I mean, that's kind of, there's a good like, word for it. It yeah, is very yeah. tight sounding. It's, it's yeah. uh, precise. You know, you can hear all the notes in the chords, but at the same time, there's no, it, 
literally it's doing exactly what you want a compressor to do. It's like anything that would be kind of uh, too much on the top or not enough on the bottom is all right where you want it to be. And it's surprising to me because that is like, like I would, I've never gone 12 to one on compression ever. Right. ever. Like, you know, two to one, three to one is like basic, you know, and then if I was using it for an effect, I might go to eight. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Right. It's just, oh yeah. Oh yeah. I wouldn't have thought to do that. I'm going to go back to eight. I'm going to mess with the attack. So let's attack all the way down. And that's attack all the way up. So it's clamping down on it and it's basically just everything that goes in, it's just grabbing it right away. So there's a happy medium in there where it's gonna sound the most natural, feel the most natural to you. Uh, for me, it's probably about a third of the way up on the attack, it starts to feel pretty good at that compression level. I'm gonna go back to four to one and, uh, and mess with the release. I'll start with it all the way down. Now all, now all the way up. It, it definitely keeps it up there. So at the longer release, it is keeping it up louder, longer. We're only at a four to one. Let's go to an eight to one and see what the difference is. Okay. So it definitely it's, has an effect. It's noticeable, yeah. Yeah, it really is. Now we've used it to tame the sound. I want to try one quick thing where I go to the, the number two position on the Strat, which is kind of a weaker sound, and see rather than if we tame it, we're looking to like boost it and give it some meat. So let's try right. that. So here's dry. And now we'll go to wet. It makes each note much fatter and thicker and bigger and longer. Yeah, and all of a sudden it's not weak saws. It's distinct. They're they're more distinct notes. They don't bleed over as much. Well, yeah, it's the it's way just... I'm playing that makes them stink. I think I, you can't go oh, okay. there. All right, so let's compare directly to the Andy Timmons signature from Carl Martin. So you have two sides. You can do like a preset, two different presets. So there's your two compressors. So threshold and response. I think that's shared between the two. And then there's a compression amount and a level. All right. So okay. Uh, a little less, a little less control. I'll stay on the left side. I'll set the uh, threshold and response in the middle. There is a busy light. I assume that means it's actually compressing and you're actually getting gain reduction if it's uh, okay. busy. Either that or just don't leave. You know, don't bother it. It's it's busy. Come back later. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's doing that classic tone enhancement right off the bat. It really is, right off the bat, it really is. I mean, yeah, I, I, I didn't, it was, it, I didn't really notice uh, the compression, although I'm sure it was it was doing something, I just, it, because it was, the more obvious thing was, oh my God, that sounds better. The the EQ came in, it's like somebody came oh, in. Oh, that and sounds made, better. Yeah. Right. And that's with compression knob all the way down. So let me. So that's that like again. one to one, probably, or Pro or or, or, or not two or one, none yeah. at all. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go to the bridge pickup. I was on uh, one and two in a second. I'm gonna go to bridge. Okay, now I'm gonna roll up the compression. Oh yeah, that's really. Uh... Wow, that's a huge sweep on yeah. that. I mean, you can hear it. I'm hitting it, and it's just that's slamming it down. 
that's maxed out compression. Yeah, I was gonna say, holy moly, that's like really. It's killing. Sweet. It's basically just yeah. smashing it on the head as soon as every note comes out. So let me find a happy medium. Okay, now that's pretty good. Let me try that messing with the threshold. I'll move that around on the wheel. And we can see how it feels. So as you uh, increase the threshold, you're letting more of it through before it clamps down and it does right. start to feel more open and natural. Yes. The threshold, by the way, we actually haven't talked about that. The threshold is the the level you'd have to cross over for the compressor. Before to the compression of. starts compressing, yeah. Right, so where it starts thinking about what you're doing. So about one o'clock is not bad. Between noon and one o'clock on there. Uh, let me mess with the response now. I'm going to just make a, a, a distinction between the two right off the bat before I forget. MXR Studio Compressor is more uh, transparent, more... Um, uh, the actual compression is noticeable without it being taken away from anything. It only adds. It just adds to the, to the sound. And immediately on the Carl Martin, the uh, Andy Timmons model, it's... The compression is... It's more noticeable, obviously, when you crank it up, but... To, um, at lower levels it's less obvious that there's a compressor on but the tone difference is amazing it's like it's like a it's sweetness like magic thing, right sauce. it's like yeah. boom i just throw magic sauce on this guitar tone and it's like oh wow that's it is very you know, sweet to me that's half of yeah. why you use a compressor it's like it's gonna it's that's gonna, true the way you were talking about do. yours why you right. use yours that's right they're all gonna do they're all gonna do what compressors do but some of them will give you that other thing that one definitely does that it just makes it sweeter yes just yes. instantly sweet. It really does. Up. It juices it right up. I like that. So I already like it better, even though I like the the more control on the MXR. The response knob turns the unit into a bit of a peak limiter. So it kind of like cranks that compression ratio all the way up. So at full clockwise position, it's essentially a peak limiter, and the compressor is in complete control. And then as you back it down, it starts to act more like a normal compressor. And uh, the way Andy uses it, from what I understand, is one side for rhythm and one side for solo, right? Okay, that makes sense. But it does add a sweetness, doesn't it? It, it, it really uh, does. It's got the sauce. And, uh, that's undeniable. Now that's in peak limiter mode. Let me back that response knob off to halfway. Okay. Once you play with it, you don't want to turn it off. There's, but that's the thing. That's a good setting. That would be if I were a guitar player. I, I, I actually, between them two, the, I mean, like I said earlier, the MXR is a great compressor. It's a problem solver. It's a beautiful problem solver. If you've got something that's peaky or you don't have enough sustain, you love everything about your tone. You just want to control it. Then I, I would think, I would, <laughs> I would think the MXR, and it, and the metering is spectacular. But I'd have that Carl Martin on all the time. That would just yeah. be an all. Yeah, this that isn't always like, on. I'd have a tuner. That would be my second pedal, and then I would just go from there. Yeah, that just sounds beautiful. I've got it almost, almost about three o'clock on the on the response i like it closer to the, the limiting it feels more studio-y somehow That's a lot more subtle, but it's still it's still very noticeable the difference. It's a, it's an you know easy I mean? change. You go kind of the guitar goes from uh to eh. Yeah, it, it feels really like it kind of does. It's it's, it's like uh, I don't know. It's magical. It's just it really. 
Uh, I could see relying on it as a thing. It's it's definitely. I could I could see yeah. using that all the time. And this is just we're still just looking at the rhythm side, right? That's true. We haven't even really dove right. into the, the lead side. So should I crank up some, uh, I some mean, lead? I, I'm going to just guess that they're just two of the same. So it would just it, it would just matter how you dial it in. But I'm curious to know if it is sort of a differently staged uh, compressor or whatever. Other thing I've noticed about both of these, pretty quiet. True. I don't right? hear any noise. Yeah. But uh, If I had to say one was quieter, I'd say it was the Carl Martin. Mm-hmm. Not by much. They're, they're both pretty quiet. All right, let me dial up some distortion in the amp. Okay, so we've got some uh, distortion set up now. So all we did was just turn up the amp uh, and roll down the master. We're going to go into the uh, MXR first, right? Give that a shot. I'm going to go through the middle settings that we kind of liked and see just what it does with that. First, I'll establish the dry tone. Uh, we did add a little reverb, so I guess it's not totally dry. But uh, the signal with no compressor, and then I'll add the compressor. does it doesn't yeah. change the tone it just kind of does a compression thing the noise level is more noticeable with the dirtier sound though yes sir it is you're right yeah it is of course but otherwise yeah it's a, it's a good it's a good sounding compressor good, it really yeah. transparent compressor, it doesn't it does the have there sounds. is i mean the tone does sound better on versus off but it's not as like magical saucy as the car martin is is, is that an official ad? ad this is, I think we're going to add it to the lexicon. I think we okay. should. I like it. I like, like it. Uh, and any effect can be that, right? It can be sauce, right? It's right. Just, it it's can got be the magic magical sauce. saucy. Yeah. Okay. So now let's try the, uh, well, let's try the one with the magical sauce. Here we go. Yes. First without and then with. <laughs> Pardon my squeak. Uh, very subtle it is in these settings. It, it is. I will say, um, yeah, less noticeable. The, the, the saucy stuff is less obvious with the yes. dirty guitar, but yes. it's still there. It's still like the improvement in the tone is greater than the improvement from the MXR. Right? Now I'm using the settings that I use for clean. So let's let's switch to the other side where I don't okay. have to mess with those settings and, and see, number one, if it's any different on that side. But right. number two, let's uh, let's see where I can find the good lead tone we're looking for there. sides seem to react the same so i think it's you know pick whichever one you want but it sounds better on the solos if i give it a little bit more beans <laughs> Thank you. 
It sustains you. It, it, it gives you. It's like oatmeal. It sustains you. It, yes. it gives you this. It doesn't it doesn't seem to color it as much. It just seems to give you that boost. But it's still a little sweeter, I think. I I, I agree. I agree. I think it's a. Um, again, you know, if if I were just starting from scratch and putting a pedal board together for a guitar, and you know, something not insane, some you know, eight ten pedals maybe tops, that compressor. <laughs> That compressor would be second pedal on my board. Wow. What's now, first? I would, I would start with that just as a, because it's, I mean, it's nice to have a compressor anyway, but if you have something that also gives you a little bit of something extra, um, to me, that's just worth, that's worth the space on the board. Yeah. Yeah. What just would be your first pedal? If this, if this is the second, what's your first? Tuner? Uh, a tuner. I would always have a tuner first just to shut everything. <laughs> benefit of having two different ones i really you know i've never really thought about that as a thing you know one for rhythms and one for lead but not only can you use it as a lead boost obviously you can use it as a right. boost but even if you if it's not that it it's just it gets more under your fingers makes the notes hang on longer makes them a little bigger and fatter and you can lean into it more without without fear of spiking too hard or choking your note off too much you can just kind of lean into it and know this thing's like keeps like saving you you know, yeah. I, it's very forgiving. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I I can already render a verdict. I mean, they're both good. I'm not going to say, there's nothing bad to say about either one of them, but just tonally, because functionally, they're both good compressors. They're, they're very good compressors. Yeah, they uh, both do a good job. But, I agree but tonally, that, that Andy Timmons model is just, uh, it's got the magic saucy, right? And that's the, that's the business. That's what you, you know, that's the it gets bonus. the Reggie Elson magic saucy seal of approval. It's like it just wow. sweetens it, it warms it, and then but then it's still doing exactly what you want. It's and that's and they are very misunderstood. And I've, I've known people who goes, "Wow, well, you know, it doesn't do anything." It's like, well, actually, you know, if you play around with them a little bit, you they it does. It does a lot. Compressors are, um, I mean, you would never go to a studio and have. Or be recording anything that didn't have compression somewhere in the chain. somewhere either post right? or pre-production absolutely yeah. right yeah. And, and, pretty much and, have to. and there's a reason for that right and it's like uh, i know live playing is different i i get that it's 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 a different thing but i don't know certain people i know you're one of these kind of people i consider myself one of those kind of people where you're a real tone connoisseur and even if you're on stage and not a single person in the audience has any awareness or appreciation for that tone while you're playing you know what you know what you got versus what you would have without adding this signal right. stuff in right right and and to me that's i don't need to i don't need to please anybody with my tone i'm really just trying to find something that i like Right. And if right. I like it, then I'm going to use it. And I'm going to play. You're going to play well and, that's, and be inspired. That's, that's exactly it. And um, although that being said, I will say, having seen Andy play 10 million times live, he's got one of the best tones in the business. I mean, when he starts to right. play, it's, it's like when Eric John starts to play, you just immediately go, oh, well, that's really good. Tone but you're a tone to, connoisseur to begin with, yeah, see? But but now I see the why, you know, he's he's paid extreme attention to things if he's actually, you know, looking at the the circuits of the compressor and I need two different ones and I need it to react like this. I mean, this has got some unique controls. Um, the peak limiter response knob. I liked it in the end, I liked it almost all the way up essentially for the peak limiting. It kind of gave it a certain it felt like a like an LA two A studio rack unit, you know, from right. from the sixties or something. It just felt nice. This didn't feel, the, the MXR didn't feel unlike that. It, 
What I, I guess what we're both saying is the MXR is not imparting a character that Andy Timmons is, but the character is one we happen to really like. Yes, and that and that's a, you know you can't beat that. Yeah, I mean the MXR does exactly what it's what it's supposed yeah. to do. Yeah. Right, and does it well. Plus, it has you know its plus is it does have a little more hands-on control of the entire envelope of the compressor, right? Where 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 the lines are. That's true. That's true. You have That's more true. control over the top and the bottom, and all. yeah, and this becomes part of your tone. That's the way I'm thinking right. of it. Is the anti tune exactly. becomes part of your tone, and this one is like I said, it's a problem solver. It's a it's not a sweetener, but it's a fixer. Yeah, and it's a studio compressor anyway, so it's you know you just it says right on it. Keep it in the studio. You don't want to put it on your gig and pedal board. If I was if I was playing bass, I would, uh, of the two, I would pick the, the MXR. Yeah, I would be too. Extremely good on bass. I bet I would it too. Very it transparent. Would do exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, right? yeah. And I think this one would impart too much to that character, and I wouldn't want that on every bass anyway. But but I can't think of too many guitars I wouldn't want that sound on. That's it seems like that sounds good on anything. Well, it's also it's nice that it has the two different sides to it, so you can you can right. switch from rhythm playing. If it's an always on pedal anyway, you can switch right. from lead playing to lead playing, and then adjust the compression level and everything to suit where you're at. Especially if it's where you're switching amp channels or something and going to a dirty channel, right? Right, and because yeah, you would certainly want. Oh, now see that you said that. I made me think on the side here. There is a remote foot switch. Oh, okay. so you could so have the same going... thing, change your amp and this at the same time. Nice. Sweet. Good thinking, Andy. Good okay. thinking, people. And good job all the way around, you guys. Spectacular work on both of these, really, to be honest. Well named. Yeah, they're great the compressors. Oh. Really, mm -hmm. The metering is really solid. Uh, they both feel like they're built like tanks. And the, and the Andy Timmons, man, the, you and Carl have, have put together something astonishing. We're real happy with that. Edge, anything else? Uh, you know, I was only, the only thing I was going to add is MXR a few years back, it's probably been 10 years by now, makes a bass compressor single unit, you know, a very small unit that mm -hmm. does have full control. And it also has a different colored LED um, uh, where it shows you the, the compression, the little, the little meter on the top. And that's also a pretty nice little compressor. Again, doesn't do the... Uh, like this one doesn't do anything special with the tone, but it's right. just a solid, good hands-on right. compressor. And ostensibly, a compressor is a volume control, not a tone control. It's just occasionally right. you get the, the magic saucy. You get, you get one with some magic saucy. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, for Reg, I'm Jet Stone, and so glad you guys could join us today. We'll see you next time on Gear and Gigs. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Gear and Games. Make sure you check out our other episodes, our podcasts, our YouTube channel, all that fun stuff. Hit that like button, hit that bell, and get notified of new episodes when they come out. And in the meantime, for Reggie and myself, Jet Stone, have a good one. See you next time.